The Occam process is uh, an idea I had about 10 years ago uh, as in, in the build-up to uh, uh, lead-free solder being introduced. I had uh, been an opponent to lead-free solder and it struck me that at one point that, that, <laughs> that it was possible to build electronics without lead and without solder in fact. So that became uh, the impetus for the Occam process. The inspiration was a, um, a 12th, 13th century on the cusp there, uh, English philosopher and monk named William of Occam, who uh, some of you may be familiar with the Occam razor, Occam's razor, which says that given multiple explanations for any given observed phenomenon, the simplest one is likely to be the best. But he also said, uh, it's vanity to do with more of that which can be done with less. And that is the inspiration uh, for the Occam process. So the Occam process at its core is fundamentally a uh, reversal of the manufacturing process for electronics. That is, rather than building a circuit board and putting components on it, building a component board and putting circuits on it. Uh, and in doing so, you bypass the, completely the solder process. and with that, uh, a substantial number of, uh, say, process steps and um, weaknesses in the finished product. Most electronic assemblies fail at a solder joint. So by eliminating solder, you eliminate one of the major failures. But there's also a number of economic benefits. Uh, the process opens the doors to a wide variety of new uh, approaches um, uh, to manufacture and assemble these structures. And uh, these are all outlined in the book. We um, are fundamentally uh, do the things that we, we typically do. In other words, the, the prescription today is build a circuit board and then put components on it and run it through a soldering process. Um, so that being the paradigm, people design for that process. So there's a need to rethink the entire a manufacturing process and you actually designer have to start thinking in a very different way than the way they do today. Um, there's no immediate incentive to do that. This is kind of a uh, chicken and egg issue. Is that, uh, you know, well, I've spoken to manufacturers said, yeah, I can probably build an assembly this way, but who's going to design it? The designers say, I could conceivably design a board this way, but who's going to build it? So in response to that, I've um, come up with an idea that I call the Occam Prize. The Occam Prize is a, um, uh, an incentivation, if you will. Uh, it's going to be a cash uh, prizes for the top. It's international in scope. Uh, and it's to all designers, open to all designers around the world. Uh, there will be recognition for every designer who participates. There will be, I say, cash awards and trophies for the top uh, 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 award winners. There will be a, uh, <clears throat> a prescription um, that will be outlined for those who want to participate because you have to follow some basic rules. Uh, but the net outcome is, is that they will come away from the experience um, with uh, an appreciation for the technology and its potential in their own design. Part of the Occam Prize concept is going to be have a designer take a product that they've already designed and to redesign it using the principles that are prescribed in this Occam Prize competition. Um, the, uh, there's been a, 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 a colleague has done for his own purposes a redesign of a product to do a demonstration. So I had, you know, had to have somebody do the, run the first uh, uh, product. He took a design that was 110 by 140 millimeters, if my memory serves me, and it was 12 layers and redesigned it and it became, again, if my memory serves, 70 by 30 millimeters. It became a rigid flex so it could even be folder into a small foot, smaller footprint. And um, it went from 12 layers to six layers. Uh, one of the things that I asked him to do, well, a couple of things, one was don't change line and space, keep those the same. Don't change the hole sizes, keep the hole sizes the same, and then see what you get. The other thing, as I said, don't go to DigiKey and look for components. I want you to pretend like all of the components exist already today with all the terminations on a half millimeter grid pitch. The results are, I think, reasonably impressive. And I think that other designers 
when they go through this exercise, which as I said, they're going to be compensated either in terms of an award or some recognition, but more important than any recognition is the knowledge that they're going to gain from going through this experience. And I expect that um, it's going to be awakening for a lot of designers, uh, and that will be an incentive not just to designers but to manufacturers to start thinking about this. And of course, their customers, for their customers to start thinking about what this might mean to them and their product. Being able to make products that are at once uh, smaller, lighter, cheaper, uh, more reliable, more environmentally friendly. One of the things that I project is the ability to use uh, uh, aluminum as a base material. Now aluminum just doesn't work for standard electronic assemblies uh, because it's, it's, it's a, such a huge conductor, a good thermal conductor, so soldering is virtually impossible with that. This, on the other hand, a nice thing about aluminum is it's, a, it's a, the, I think it's the fifth most abundant element on the planet, um, and it is about 70 cents per pound, so it's extremely inexpensive. And this opens the doors to being able to make some very, very uh, lightweight electronics that are thermally conductive, become good heat spreaders, can be pen potentially used as power and ground layers inside the structure. So again, you know, within the book, there's a, a large, uh, a lot of detail on this. And um, I would invite, you know, the viewers to take a few minutes, download the book. I would ask them, in fact, don't go to the front of the book, go to the back of the book. Show the, read the example, and then if that doesn't, if that piques your curiosity, you can go to the front and then start looking at all the steps that you might be able to use, all the benefits of this uh, uh, unique approach to manufacturing, which I believe you know, has the potential, certainly disruptive, um, it's, gonna, it's a game changer um, at some point in time. I, I may be dead before it actually all kicks in, but, but on the other hand, I, I take a little bit of inspiration from Moses you know, Moses had an opportunity to look into the promised land. He didn't get to go there, go there but, but it does represent an opportunity, I think, for a lot of people to rethink. The, the, you know, we come away from any experience where we, uh, where we learn something new, better off. There was a, an American jurist and philosopher, Oliver Wendell Holmes, who said, uh, said, the mind that's been stretched by a new idea or concept never returns to its original dimensions. And that's, I guess, what I'm hoping for from you know the viewers, those designers out there to take a look at this and participate in the Occam process when it comes to pass. There's an interesting conundrum here is that depending on how one uses the technology, it may be that the lines and spaces actually can get wider. You know, that the layer counts should probably reduce. In other words, the, the actual layer count depends on the demands of the design. So there's no way to predict what that is. That's always an issue of of the number of I.O. in a, 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 the main device. In the case of the design that was the example, it was a 441 pin FPGA. So, you know, the number of escapes that you have to get through. Um, the beauty of this concept is that because the, the pads are reduced in size, the holes associated with them can be very small and all of the, there's no, no pad termination. So you have a lot more routing channels that, that pop out of the use of this Occam concept. The other thing I would add is that with the circuits on the outside of the assembly rather than on the inside, you know, when you mount a component onto a circuit board with solder, um, we're, there's a big concern about peel strength. In other words, that the concern that a component's gonna fall off the board. Well, if you reverse the structure and you put the components on the inside and you put the circuits on the outside, well, it's really hard to shake the circuits off of a circuit board. So it represents a substantial improvement in opportunity to be able to build electronic assemblies. I would also add, and it's in the book, is that when you've achieved that, you can actually put an insulating coat over the entire rest of the assembly, leaving open, open only the features that are of interest in terms of terminations, electronic terminations, and then plate the entire assembly with metal. So you have something that's an EMI, ESD shield, uh, it's a hermetic shield, so it's completely water immune. So there's a, I mean, the number of different things and you know, potential benefits that come from this Occam concept are, I, I haven't, 
I haven't thought of them all, and I've been thinking about it for 10 years, and there are new ones that keep on coming up. So I expect that you know, uh, your viewers will get an opportunity to come up with even, even new benefits that I haven't considered yet for myself. The technology is uh, suitable for rigid and flex. In fact, both in both books, if you, if uh, you know, those who are interested in my uh, flex circuit book, there is a description of a process for making an Occam type assembly using um, as a rigid flex. So it shows, you know, definitive steps broken down as to what can do, what one can do to build out these types of assemblies. So I think, you know, um, this is as much as anything. I I can't give, you know, all of the everything is unique. I mean, this is one of the great ironies of of printed circuits I've learned in my 45 years is that uh, uh, they are, every one of them, a unique design. They are unique and one of a kind. And yet, you know, the unfortunate thing is, uh, you know, so they're completely customized. And the unfortunate thing is a lot of people consider them to be commodities. And um, so when you put those two words together, a custom commodity, that's an oxymoron. Those are to two words that don't belong together. But I think you know, at the end of the day, there's going to be uh, uh, one other benefit, if you will think, that I've thought of a long time ago, was that it, the potential to build an economic run unit of one in a matter of a few hours. There are, uh, with the new printed technologies, you know, the 3D printers and the printable inks and the like, is, is, it's, it's just a, a, an amazing number of opportunities that are out there that are yet to be explored. And I think it's going to be, um, uh, a very interesting time going forward. I see a convergence. You know, in my experience, my I have 180 some odd patents, and and my experience is is that many of my ideas uh, I find myself to be 10 to 15 years ahead of time, and eventually they catch up. We're on the cusp of that right now, of being able to see some of these things to show up and manifest themselves in products. But it's going to be, you know, the designers who are going to drive this thing. You know, there's a, there's a need for some motive force. Once we, get, once we overcome that, once the motivation starts to kick in, and I think the incentivization or the incentivizing of designers to expand their knowledge and education through an Occam Prize, which gives them you know, a reward, if you will. Yeah, maybe they'll win the, the, the cash prizes, but more important than any of that, as I've said before, is, is their, the increase in their knowledge and, and their understanding, because they're going to think about things that I have yet to dream of. And that's where the beauty comes, because we do these things together. Nobody gets to do this. I'm not going to do it on my own. It's something that we're going to do collectively, we're going to do globally, and we're going to do it to the benefit of you know, everybody on the planet and product users. I have, um, at least personally, I'm very, very keen on the idea of being able to use these concepts and processes for manufacturing products for uh, the world's poorest people. You know, military, aerospace, automotive, and medical product users have something in common with the world's poorest people that they both have to have incredibly reliable products. The world's poorest people, if you're making $2 a day, you also need very inexpensive process. And I think the Occam process will do that. So hopefully, you know, some of your viewers will have the opportunity uh, to explore that for themselves. And I make myself available. I can be found at joe at verdantelectronics.com. Send me an email and I'll be happy to dialogue with you going forward. And I thank you and Sierra for the opportunity to present to your viewers. It's, uh, Marvelous folks, I've had admiration for you folks for many years, so this is a great opportunity, I thank you.